I wanted to talk about suffering and particularly on the path to awakening. I was talking about this today in my members group and it's something that I've seen over and over where there's a line of thinking that suffering is necessary in order to awaken or that the path to awakening is a path through suffering. And I agree with that and I disagree. I disagree in that I don't think it's necessary. Um, I agree insofar as most people do take that path. And I think they take that path not through choice, but because we are all suffering in some form or another. Um, If we are not fully awakened to our true nature, we are on this roller coaster of highs and lows, which ultimately leads to suffering and then back to the highs and then back to the lows again. So, yes, a lot of people take the path of suffering, but it is not necessary in order to awaken. There is a quote by Haruki Murakami, and he says, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And I love this because it highlights the fact that, yes, we will experience pain in our lives. We will experience certain things that um, will be painful, but the experience of suffering is optional. We don't have to stay there. And when you think about it, this is what I was talking about today, is that suffering is really only a form of judgment it's the mind judging something as bad or unwanted or um judging something as being wrong or any form of judgment that the mind thinks that it judges something as not good or not right or wanting to get away from and you could say it's also a form of resistance but in general, it is a form of judgment. And once the mind makes that decision that something is unwanted or something is bad, then that leads to suffering because we then want to get back to being in that place of what is wanted and what it does feel good. So the way out of suffering is to accept everything that is as it is. And not to judge it with the mind, but simply to observe it. And when we begin to do this, it really releases us from all of the pain of suffering, all of the um, things that the mind can come up with that will tell you how bad things are and how wrong things are and how difficult things are. And it brings you back into the present moment. And without the constant narrative of the mind going on in the background, saying about how awful things are or whatever it is that's going on and um, without that there is just simply this moment things are as they are and there is no need for to run away from it there is no need to judge it there is no need to resist it and once you accept everything arising as it is in this moment it actually allows room for not only for your energy to rise and to lead to um, states of peace, but also for the situation or whatever it was that you were judging in the first place to right itself, often without any inf- intervention on our part. It's often our minds that keep things in place. It's our resistance of certain things, certain people, certain situations that actually keep them stuck in place. So not only does the acceptance of what's happening right now without any judgment, not only does that lead to greater peace and happiness, it also allows for what is to play out in whatever form it wants to and for us to be released from the ties that bind us to that person or that thing or that situation. So The way to do this is to begin to recognize when the mind comes in with its narrative. And 
this will happen a lot and you'll notice throughout the day that the mind has this constant narrative you may be walking down the street and you'll see somebody wearing something that maybe you wouldn't wear and instantly the mind will jump to that doesn't look nice or I wouldn't wear that or some other form of judgment you might be talking to somebody and they say something that maybe you wouldn't say and the mind again will jump in with its narrative of why did they say that? I wouldn't say that. They shouldn't say that. All of the things that the mind will come up with. And it's so interesting when you tune in to the mind and its judgment and its narrative and see the absolute insanity of it. And if you can be in a conversation with somebody without letting the mind jump to all of its conclusions and just be open to hearing them, to being with them, to be present with them, to be open to whatever it is they have to say without judgment, without wanting to change them or the words or anything about the encounter. Notice how easy it becomes. Notice how more, much more relaxed you become. Notice how it becomes easy. And really, that's the whole point of it. So you can let the mind run in the background if you like but once you become aware of this once you start seeing how the mind will jump to its conclusions and its judgments and it is constantly has something to say about everyone and everything once you begin to see this you can't unsee it you can't go back you'll begin to notice how the mind is the suffering and without the mind there is no suffering when you let go of the thoughts, when you let go of the narrative of the mind, and you don't even have to let go of it um, completely, you can just be aware of it, then you will be released from it. Once you're aware of the tricks that the mind plays, once you can see it truly for what it is, then once you're aware, you don't have to engage, you don't have to become what the mind says, you don't have to be the mind, you can be the observer. And this really is what you are all along anyway.